Hello students, this short video is to help my fast track management 205 class to prepare for the midterm exam. From chapter one, make sure you're able to define management or at least recognize the definition. You should also know the four functions of management, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Uh, further, the levels of management, top, middle, first line, and team leaders. In addition to that, you need to know the roles managers play. And when I say roles, I mean the major roles, interpersonal, informational and decisional. You should know what that means, but also be able to identify when they're in that role. Also, skills that managers need. And in your book, skills are listed as human skills, conceptual skills, and technical skills. Now, in addition to knowing what the skills are, you should also know which skills are most important to which level of management. For example, conceptual skills are most important for top management whereas technical skills are a must for first-line supervisors because they work directly with the operational employees. Okay, chapter two. Chapter two talks about the history of management. The first topic, scientific management. You should know what scientific management is. Also, the father of uh, scientific management, Frederick W. Taylor. You should know what soldiering is. And the peace rate system, where money was the primary incentive. You should be familiar with Henry Gantt and the Gantt chart. You should know bureaucratic and administrative management focused on improving the efficiency of manufacturing facilities and their workers. Now, some of the things from bureaucratic are things that you probably think about automatically like people should be hired because of their technical training or education. Promotion should be based on experience and achievement. Rules, procedures, and decisions should be recorded in writing. And you should have professional managers rather than the owner running the company. Okay. Henry Fayol is another name you should be familiar with. He came up with the functions of management and also the 14 principles. Human relations management. Now, in that area, you want to be familiar with the Hawthorne studies and Elton Mayo. Remember, this is the experiment about testing whether increasing the lighting would increase productivity. And what they found was that workers' feelings and attitudes affected their work as much as anything else. So it kicked off the human relations movement. Cooperation and acceptance of authority. Chesta Barnard talks about the fact that the workers, in fact, grant 
authority to the manager, not the other way around. Let's see, anything else here? Operations management. When you think operations management, think numbers, quantitative or math. The last, no, not the last, I'm sorry, systems management. You should know what a system is and the difference between an open system and a closed system. The last topic from this chapter is contingency management. This is the idea that there's no one universal management theory. And the most effective management is going to depend on the situation. That's it for chapter two. Chapter three. Here's the chapter where we talk about the environment. You should know what we mean by the external environment the general environment, the factors that make up the general environment, and the factors that make up the specific environment. Now, I'm going to suggest you spend more time on the general environment. Also, how is a stable environment different from a dynamic one? How is a complex environment different from a simple one? Again, the general environment includes the economy, technology, social, cultural, and political legal. Now, the specific environment this is the environment that is specific to your company. So for every company, it's going to be different. Your customer, your competition, your supplier, your industry regulation, advocacy groups are all part of the specific environment. If we got anything else from this chapter. Oh, yeah. Okay. The idea about the environment is that it's dynamic and uncontrollable. Hence, you have to stay abreast of it. You should know what the term environmental scanning means. Environmental scanning. You also should know what makes up organizational culture. Key values, beliefs, and attitudes shared by members of the organization. And that will do it for Chapter 3. Chapter 4. Hmm. First thing we start with is ethics. What are ethics? Next, you should know what we mean by workplace deviance, production deviance, property deviance, political deviance, and personal aggression. Now, U.S. Sentencing Commission guidelines. The only thing you need to know about that is that it, that's what they are, guidelines. So you should recognize that term or that commission. Let's skip on. Oh, also from this chapter, you certainly need to know what a whistleblower is. What is Sarbanes-Oxley Act? Now, 
How can you encourage ethical behavior? Selecting and hiring ethical employees, having a written code of ethics, ethics training, and an ethical climate in your organization. Next, what does the term social responsibility mean? And what are the two different models? There's a shareholder model and the stakeholder model. You should know how they differ. And I'm going to leave it at that. That's going to do it to chapter four. Chapter five. Oh, this is the chapter on planning. First, you should know what planning is. Choosing a goal and developing a method or strategy to achieve it. You need to know what we mean by SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. You also need to know I'm trying to find it here. The difference between distal and proximal goals. Next, you should know the different types of planning. Strategic planning. Who does it? What's the time frame and the level of detail? Tactical planning. Who does it? And what is the time frame and detail? Now, under tactical planning, you should also be familiar with MBO, Management by Objective. Finally, operational plans, detailed day-to-day. -day. Who does this? Well, your lower level managers. Also, single-use plans and standing plans. Understanding plans, you have policies, procedures, and rules. Remember, standing plans are used for what? for situations that occur regularly, like the bank example. The teller is always going to say they can't cash a two-party check. They don't want the tellers to make the decision, but a manager still can. Next, you need to know the steps in the rational decision-making model. Define the problem, identify decision criteria, and you should know what decision criteria are. Weigh the criteria, generate alternative courses of action, evaluate each alternative, and compute the optimal decision. Um, you also need to know what the term satisfies means. Next, group decision making techniques. First, you should realize that groups make better decisions than individuals. The techniques, nominal group technique. Delphi technique, and electronic brainstorming. You should be familiar with those. Actually, oh, also one of the pitfalls, you should know what the term groupthink means. Chapter 6. This is the chapter about strategy.
Okay. First, you need to know what we mean by a competitive advantage and what is meant by a sustainable competitive advantage. Situational analysis. This is something that was in the previous chapter, but here they introduced the SWOT analysis. The SWOT analysis is a planning tool that allows the firm to look at their internal strengths and weaknesses and external opportunities and threats. Next, levels of strategy, corporate level strategy. And under that, make sure you're familiar with the BCG matrix. You know, the one with stars, question marks, cash cows, and dogs. Now, you should be able to answer this kind of question. What's a star? Um, that's something in a high growth market with a high market share. What's, what's a cash cow? Uh, well, that would be in a high... I'm sorry, a low growth or mature market, but a large market share. So for each of those, you should be able to explain it like that or recognize it. Next, grand strategies, three kinds, growth, stability, and retrenchment recovery. Next, industry level strategy. Make sure you're familiar with Michael Porter's five industry forces. You should also be familiar with firm level strategy. And what do we mean by direct competition? And that pretty much wraps up Chapter 6. Chapter 7 will not be represented on the exam. Chapter 8, global business. First, what do, mean, what do we mean by global business? Next, what is a multinational corporation? Now, this chapter is kind of simple. You should know the methods for conducting global business, exporting, licensing, joint ventures, etc. In addition to that, you should know the barriers to free trade. That would include tariffs, quotas, embargoes. Next, trade agreements. Make sure you know about GATT and where's the one we're in? The one we used to be in. It used to be NAFTA and it's now called North America, USMCA, United States, Mexico, Canada Agreement. Next, the difference between global consistency or adaptation. Global consistency means that your business is consistent wherever you do business. Adaptation means that you adapt the way you do business to the place you're doing business in. Okay, so we talked about the ways exporting, cooperative contracts, strategic alliances, wholly owned affiliates. Okay, the other name for that is actually uh, direct foreign investment. You should understand companies that engage in direct foreign investment are known as multinational corporations because 
they have facilities in multiple nations. Now, you should also be familiar with political risk and cultural differences. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up. Your exam will be 65 questions worth four points each. You will have 90 minutes. Once you start, you must complete. The exam is multiple choice. Good luck.